Thank you for downloading this podcast from Emmanuel Church Lurgan. At Emmanuel, our vision is to help rewrite the story of Craigavon, Ireland and the nations with the good news of the Kingdom of God. We hope you enjoy listening to this message. All right, good stuff. All right, for um, maybe about 20 minutes or so, I just want to try and close off. Today is our last day teaching on this series of Generation Next. We have absolutely loved being able to teach uh, from the book of Joshua. Um, we, as, as was alluding to earlier, we really felt just a sense of the Lord's leading just upon this, you know, that there was something about us as a church family being able to capture together what it was and to have an imagination again for what are some of the new and the next moments for us. And it's been a joy over these last number of weeks just being able to to teach out of the book of Joshua. Like One of my highlights was even the morning here where we heard Phil retell the story of Emmanuel. Uh, We can never go tired of just hearing, just reminding ourselves of God's faithfulness. And yet the reason why we told the story, the reason why we wanted to retell the story, and we'll keep retelling the story, is because we want to use it as a basis and a foundation and a platform from which we are stepping in to the next and the new moments that the Lord desires to lead us to as His people. And to do this, this is where we were really trying to encourage ourselves, you know, for us to be really, to be able to individually in your lives, collectively as a church family, for us to be able to fully step into the next and the new. We need to be people that almost would follow the line that the Lord spoke to Joshua. We read in one of the very first weeks, be strong and courageous. As we step into the next and new moments, be strong and courageous. Whatever the new things that you sense the Lord is leading you to in your life, be strong and courageous. And yet, what lay ahead... And this is the last bit of recap I'll do, and we'll go straight into the teach for today. But as we, what lay ahead, this is what we reminded ourselves of, the goodness of God in our lives. We have a Father who loves us. And what lies ahead of us all the time, what He desires to lead us into is immeasurably more than we could think or hope or imagine. And what lay ahead of the children of Israel in the book of Joshua wasn't just a nice little land, but actually what we were told was that it was a land that was flowing with milk and honey. It was land of abundance. What God was leading His people into and what God was desiring to bring His people into was a land of goodness and and abundance. We've looked at many different things over the past number of weeks, looked at uh, consecration, holiness, being set apart unto the Lord. We've looked about steps of faith that we've needed to take. And over the last couple of two, three weeks particularly, we've looked about the things that in our lives need to be devoted unto the Lord. And today, I I round that up just as we again conclude the series. And where we really frame that in terms of living a life of devotion, the things devoted unto the Lord were under these words, possessions, plans, person. You know, especially the last two weeks, we looked at this first word, possessions. We taught on tithing. I don't have my buckets here with me today. We're not going to go into teach on it again. But we looked about this, the reality that this was a godly principle that the Father had laid down for us, that He was desiring to lead us as His people in that way. And yet today, where we want to come, just briefly, I'm going to just share just some Scripture passages in these last two. And then I'm going to just jump into just the next part of Joshua just for a few minutes as we conclude. But, you know, one of the things that's really important for us, I feel, to really grasp and hold on to, and, and I taught on this a couple of weeks ago, you know, that everything, particularly even as we framed the idea of looking at our possessions, when we framed the principle of tithing, when we frame all the different things that I'm going to look at today, you know, we need to filter everything through a fresh understanding, a fresh mindset as we even read the Bible. So one of the words that I looked at the last time was this really, really big word, a redemptive hermeneutic hermeneutic about how we interpret Scripture, redemptive, how God is redeeming and restoring all things. And just really, really briefly, this is what we reminded. The blue line at the top was really crucial for us. This was always God's plan and purpose for us. God's desire for you and for us as His humanity has never, ever changed, right? It has never, ever changed what His will and His purpose is for us has never changed. But yet the red line that we saw is that as humanity, we we are in a fallen state. We have fallen away. We have fallen short of the glory of God. And because of this, God and His loving kindness desires to lead us as His people. And so what we read, and even some of the things we're going to look at again today, this is why we need to remind ourselves, God desiring to almost take His people, to take His creation by the hand and to lead them step by step. And so what we read in some of the passages, even some of those ones have seemed difficult. And even as we look back, they seem quite dated. <laughs> But yet into those cultures, what God was doing was taking them by the hand and leading them step by step by step more closely 
aligned to what his original plan and purpose was. Jesus comes and reveals the kingdom of heaven fully amongst us. He says the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus obviously died. He, he resurrects. He ascends back to heaven. And we said at this point, as the church was born, and this is the period that we live in, you could probably put a line going up and down because there's been the ebbs and flows of different things, but yet we're all continuing to try and step more and more closely to the heart of God. And yet this is the good news, is that one day Jesus will return and that at that moment he will fully restore all things because his plan and his purpose for us have never changed. And yet as we look at this, and I suppose this is where I just want to just show this on the screen again. As we look at this, particularly the part at the bottom where you see this little line going up into all of these different areas. And as we come today to even look just briefly around what are even the plans that we have in our lives? What are some of the things, how we use every part of our very being, who we are as people, as we bring these before the Lord, everything God is saying needs to live a life of devotion onto Him. God desires to lead us as a people in all of these areas. So really briefly, I'm not going to take time to teach in these this morning because I want to just get into the book of Joshua. But very briefly, even as we look at the idea of plans, you know these verses. It says this, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails, God's pr purpose that will prevail over our lives. And you know this one really, really well, Jeremiah 29. I know the plans I have for you, declares so. So God has plans for you. Plans that are for good, plans that are not to harm you, but to prosper you and to give you hope in the future. And what he desires to do is in those plans that he has as a father, as a good father, again, still as his children, desires to take us by the hand and to lead us into those plans. The question I want to be asking this morning is, how do we know sometimes what God's thoughts are around some of the plans in our lives? When you even think about your whole life, who you are as a person, you know this passage in Romans chapter 12, therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect. Well, imagine being able to test, God, what is your plan? What is your will in this way? And God gets really, really practical, just really briefly. Like, here's how God wants to lead us. Imagine this, even around things like this, like your work. Paul says this to the church in Colossae, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. I remember her testimony here, Melanie Norton, stood here in the stage and she gave a testimony. Imagine being able to, as a teacher, going into her classroom and standing each morning at the beginning of a day and asking, God, what do you want to do? What do you desire to do? I welcome you. What do you desire to do in this space this morning? God has plans and purposes for work, even around things like our diet. So whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God and the goodness of it with our rest patterns. We read about this even in the book of Acts. So I'm not going to take time, but this is where the principle of Sabbath and everything came in. And all of this, all of this, what it does is that it reinforces the truth of what we read by the psalmist who had caught the understanding of this so deeply. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fall, for the Lord holds them by the hand. That line, we should imagine this, the Lord holding us by the hand, interested in every detail of your life, has thoughts about every detail of your life. Sometimes when you think that you're on your own, you're not we have a father who has thoughts and is interested in every single detail of your life. And what he desires to do is as he holds you by the hand, this is where we never need to stumble. We never need to fall. And today, all I want to ask ourselves then is, how, how do we live into this? As we conclude this series, as we step into this Christmas season, as we look into the new year and everything that lies ahead for us, how do we step into this more fully? And probably one of, the, one of the truths that we need to almost name at the very beginning of this is simply to say this, almost like it was with tithing. I recognize that this can be a question or a thought that can come into your head. I know sometimes it was for me, particularly when it came to money, it was, but this is mine. I want to choose what I want to do with it. When it comes to things like my plans, <laughs> or go, what I'm doing with all of these different areas of my life, the narrative almost that's the spirit of the age would encourage us to think like and to think through is this, you're the master of your own destiny. 
You simply need to make choices just for you. This is what culture will tell us. This is all we need to hold on to. And yet again, it's into these areas that God has plans and has desires. God is interested in every detail of our lives and desires to lead us. Again, we need to live daily lives of devotion. And through this, we get to live victorious lives. Just three points, just, and I mean this really, really briefly, and we're going to finish just by praying together at the very end. But three points we've just got over the last number of weeks into Jericho. We've looked about the moments of breakthrough. And yet this morning, as we, as we look into this, when we get into the very next chapter in Joshua chapter 7, this is what we read. So three, three points that I want to bring in terms of what it is for us to live and to lead forward. The first thing I want to just draw out is simply this. You know, I want us to pay attention to what it means to miss the mark or to miss the best that God has for you. You need to understand that there, each and every day in our lives, there is a potential that we can miss the mark and we can miss the best of what God has for you in your life. So in Joshua chapter 7, if you have your Bibles with you, we're going to be between Joshua 7, 8, and 9, just picking out a few different verses as we go through this. But Joshua chapter 7, verses 1 to 5 says this, But Israel violated the instructions about the things set apart for the Lord. A man named Achan had stolen some of these dedicated things. So the Lord was very angry with the Israelites. Achan was the son of Carmi, a descendant of Zimri, son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah. Joshua sent some of his men from Jericho to spy out the town of Ai, east of Bethel, near beth -Haven. Remember the name of that town, Ai. When they returned, they told Joshua, there's no need for all of us to go there. It won't take more than two or 3,000 men to attack Ai. Since there are so few of them, don't make all our people struggle to go up there. So approximately 3,000 warriors were sent, but they were soundly defeated. The men of Ai chased the Israelites from, town to, uh, from the town gate as far as the quarries, and they killed about 36 who were retreating down the slope. The Israelites were paralyzed with fear at this turn of events, and their courage melted away. I want you to imagine what this must have felt like. Imagine what it was like for the children of Israel. Like they had just come through like some of these incredible faith-building moments. They've just walked through the Jordan rivers. They've just had seen the walls of Jericho crumble down. They've, they've gone into all of these moments of victory, and then suddenly this. And you can imagine the questions in their minds, like, God, why, what are you doing? God, why, why has this happened to us? And, and a couple of things that I just simply want to just draw out of this before we move on to the last couple of points. You know, as his people, you know what we read from this, as his people here in the narrative, and yet we can apply it to our own lives, as his people, they were not taking seriously the directions of the Lord that he had given to them and that he had spoken. All that God had told them when they got into the land was simply this, do not touch the devoted things of the Lord. That's the one thing they were told not to do. And there was this guy, Achan, he comes, and I, I spoke about it a couple of weeks ago, so I don't need to get into the details of it, but he just, he had seen some of these things, and he wanted them for himself, and probably in his head, he thought, Look, I'm sure it'll be all right. And he started to almost create a narrative and an, an understanding in his own mind that almost tried to allow himself or to excuse himself from not stepping into the things that the Lord was leading him into. God had been clear with his people about how to live and how to conduct themselves. And he does this with us as well. He intentionally, again, has set principles in Scripture to help his people have a clear understanding of lifestyle patterns that means that we will not fall into areas of destruction in our life. Because remember, here's the thing. We have an enemy who desires to kill us and to destroy in your life. And God, as a good father, wants to lead us away and to guard us. And so he's given principles that he's spoken in the word to us to be able to follow, to devote ourselves to so that we can live fully. And yet this is the other part that it's not even just about in a defensive posture. Because remember what Jesus said about his church, not in a defensive posture. He says, but I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And so God, in his love for us as his church, wants to lead us to be able to step fully into all that he has. And so he set principles for us to follow. And again, I'd said this around tithing, not because God loves rules, not because God loves regulations, 
But God delights in us as His people living fully and coming alive in the things of Him. And yet, when we fall into sin, what we see is that ultimately can just lead to areas of destruction in our lives. You know, the principle of sin is crucial for us to grasp. God is totally, 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 His wrath comes against sin. God hates sin. God, like, is detested by sin. But what we need to know is that God does not hate humanity. God hates the mark of sin that's upon us, but that is not, that has come from the result of the fall. It's come from the enemy. God hates sin, and God's judgment and wrath has to come upon sin. God's judgment and wrath was never intended for humanity, but God's judgment and wrath has to come upon sin. And that's why Jesus in His kindness paid the price for us. We haven't been able to celebrate it today, but we will be recognizing it over the coming weeks again in communion. But this is why Jesus paid the price. He paid the price for our sins so that the wrath of God didn't have to come upon us. And yet, while we can celebrate the fact that we are forgiven, that we are redeemed, what we need to recognize then is the seriousness of sin in our lives still in an ongoing way. And this is where I believe the New Testament writers, they had it fully grasped and understood. You see, and I, I would teach in this and grow. Any of the guys that come through grow, you've heard me speak in this, so apologies for repetition. But you know, one of the, the words that was used in the New Testament for the area or the word to do with sin was simply this, hamartia. And it means missing the mark. So in, in those days in biblical times, as the archers were aiming at the target, if the arrow, it's not even if it wasn't, miss, if it wasn't hitting the bullseye, if it was missing that round board, they would have shouted this word, hamartia. So, any of you play golf? Any golfers in the room? Good. No one, no one likes golf like me then as well. But you know the word, so if, if, you've, if, you've, if someone has sliced the ball, what's the word that they shout in the course? Four, right? And it means that people can duck and get out of the way. This is a word that would have been shouted. If the R was missing the target, they would have shouted this. People knew that it was missing the target. And this is the essence of what sin is in our life. As a father who has good wills and has good purposes for our life, it is his desire that we would hit the target, that we would be a people that would live into all that he has for us. And yet when sin comes into our life, what it does in a really subtle way is that it causes us to miss the target and to miss the very best of what God has for us. This is what we need to recognize will ultimately lead to our own destruction in our life. In a really, really, really subtle way, we have an enemy who wants to steal, kill, and to destroy. We need to recognize the seriousness of sin, not staying in step with God and following in His ways is crucial for us. It led to the destruction of Achan. It can lead to destruction in our own lives. And this is the enemy's purpose. And this is why, in the last couple of points, this is why we need to understand the significance of what it is to be a people who inquire of the Lord. I, I don't know what your prayer life is like. And, and I don't know what you, f you frame prayer as fully being. It is, for me, a conversation with God. And it is important to be able to pray on a lot of the different things in our lives. But you know, one of the most important things that we can be doing in our conversation and in our prayer with God is to be asking the question of, God, what do you want to do? God, what do you want to do in my life? God, what do you want to do about this situation? God, what do you want to do about this circumstance that I'm going through at the moment? And yet what we can see, and we're going to look at this in the biblical narrative, how often we can run ahead to almost try to work this out in our own way. In Joshua 7, again, we go back and we read this. And this is what it says. Joshua sent some of his men from Jericho to spy out the town of Ai, east of Bethel, near Beth Haven. When they returned, they told Joshua, there's no need for all of us to go up there. It won't take more than two or 3,000 men to attack Ai. Since there are so few of them, don't make all our people struggle to go up there. So approximately 3,000 warriors were sent but they were soundly defeated. Let me, let me just point just one thing in this. And you could so easily skim past it, but that's why I put it in bold. It doesn't say that Joshua didn't ask the Lord, but I don't think in this that he actually did. You see, what had happened was that Joshua was so filled with confidence and courage from the victories that they'd just been through. And perhaps I actually think he might have been filled with a wee bit of adrenaline, just pumped and ready to go at the next part of this. And Joshua just goes head first, just straight in. Joshua sends some of his men into this. And as he starts to go, we read this, he starts other people. So Joshua's about to send the whole troops, and other people say, oh, well, Joshua, don't be, don't be stupid. 
We don't need all of them. We only need just a few. And so he listens to other people. He doesn't inquire of the Lord. He listens what he thinks is sound wisdom or sound advice from other people. And it ultimately leads to destruction. Again, in chapter 9, if you've, if you've got Bibles with you, flick across to chapter 9. We're told about a, a group of people called the Gibeonites. They're people that lived in one of the territories right beside where they're at. And ultimately, the Lord was about to lead the children of Israel to victory in this place. But yet, the Gibeonites... They deceive the people of Israel. They pretend to be a people from a land far, 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 far away. They come with bread that's all blue molded, and they have this story and this narrative, and they say, well, we've been journeying for a long time. This bread was freshly cooked when we left our home, and now it's all molded. We're not from nearby. We're from really, really far away. Joshua makes a treaty with them, and it leads to just the people not stepping into the will of the Lord. But listen what it says in Joshua chapter 9. So the Israelites examined their food, but they did not consult the Lord. I, uh, just one question, just simply to ask, how often do we make decisions based on our own desires or, as we say in this, off the influence of other people? I don't know what the big things that you're facing in your life at the moment. I, I'm not trying to downplay the, the enormity, perhaps, of some of the things that you're facing in your life. And yet what we need to hear and the understanding of the biblical narrative is this, is that how easy it is, even in our own confidence in some of the places where we've been with the Lord, to just go head first straight into things without being still to take time to actually listen and say, God, what do you want to do? Perhaps you're being influenced by other voices in your life, and they might be really, really good voices. I need you to hear me today to say that where the Lord is desiring to lead you, you need to be still and to listen to Him. This is why James would say, be, be slow to speak, quick to listen, slow to get anger. We need to be a people that will listen to what the Father will say. We need to be a people that are desiring to be inquisitive to hear, a people who will frequently be positioning ourselves to ask the question, God, what do you want to do in this? With some of the decisions that you're facing in work, businessmen, some of the big decisions that you're facing while you're filled with so much skill and ability and anointing in your own way, how often do you frequently pause and ask the question of, God, what do you want to do? How often do we invite the Lord in, perhaps even in your family decisions, many of the different things that you're facing, maybe some of the health issues that you're going through, perhaps, I don't know what it is you're going, but how are you being still at the moment to ask, God, what do you want to do? Father, what do you want to do in this situation? Because ultimately, this is what leads us to the place of victory. And this is why in Deuteronomy we read this. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that they may follow all the words of the law. There are some secret things, plans that the Lord has, and yet his heart, he desires to reveal it to his people. This is why seek and you will find, knock, and the door will be opened. If you're in a place today of confusion, and you're in a day today in a place of unknown, today I want you to know you have a Father who wants to take you by the hand and still desires to lead you step by step by step into whatever the future is for you. And all we need to do is to pause and be still and to inquire of the Lord. And can I just say this just with one principle? If you haven't heard from Him, don't move. If you haven't heard the direction from him, don't move. You might hear from other people, but if it hasn't been affirmed and approved by God, don't move. Be still and wait on what the Lord would say. And final thing, just simply with this, from Joshua chapter 8. So we need to be a people that don't miss the mark, <laughs> inquire of the Lord. But you know, also, we need to be a people that just make sure that we stay fresh. <laughs> we need to be a people that are daily devoted. In Joshua chapter 8, this is what it says. With this, I'm almost done. The Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid or discouraged. Take all your fighting men and attack, attack AI. Let me pause here a second. So remember what happened in Joshua chapter 7. Joshua didn't ask anything about, from God. Joshua just gave the men some instructions, got influence from other people. And yet look at, the, look at the difference straight away, what's happening here. Straight away, it's God that's giving a direction. The Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid or discouraged, but take your men, take all of your fighting men and attack Ai, for I have given you the king of Ai, his people, his town, and his land. You will destroy them as you destroyed Jericho and its king, but this time 
You may keep the plunder and the livestock for yourselves. Set an ambush behind the town. I, um, I, I wonder as you read this, and this is the part where my mind was going during the week. And with this, this, let me leave this final thought. You see what happened in the destruction with Jericho, or off, off the back of Jericho when we get into chapter 7. You remember what the Lord told them in chapter 6 was this. The things that were devoted and were set apart unto the Lord, God said this, do not touch them. Do not take any of them. And yet Achan avoided what God said and took from it. And yet we get into chapter 8, and listen to what it says with a bit that's underlined. But this time, God says, no, actually, no, you can take some of it. No, you can keep some of the plunder. No, you can take some of the, po- the spoils of, of war that's here. And you can imagine what this started to do in their minds. You can imagine, like they knew what happened the last time they'd taken this stuff. They realized the bad things that had actually happened. So you can imagine some of them starting to freak out or to panic and say, don't be stupid. Don't be taking any of this. But yet this was the principle of what it was to be still and to actually hear the, the now word of the Lord. The thing that I want to ask us this morning is this. What is the but this time word that God is speaking to you. If you're living off a word or a principle or a direction that God gave you about a different season of your life and trying to apply it in this season, it doesn't apply. What you need to know right now is that there is a but this time word that God wants to speak to you. What we need to know for us as a church, if we're going to just be a people that lives off what we've done in the past and try to almost recreate it, we need to know that God has a but this time word for us. And this is where we need to be desperate and hungry more than ever to hear, God, what are you saying and speaking into my life at this moment? This is the only way that we can fulfill this, is to be a people that would inquire. For some, and this is where it's the exciting part of it, for some, this is what we look at. Tony and Sonia are probably watching or listening online. We say hello to them again. We've prayed for Heather and Mark and the guys in Cara. You know, for many people, as they've inquired of the Lord, they felt that even from within us as a church family, it's been a call to go. For you, perhaps, as you inquire of the Lord in this season, it might be a call for a change or a shift. Something new might be happening within your work or within your family, some new rhythms. For some, it might be a sense of going. It might be a sense of what God is calling you and leading you in terms of, of work and for His kingdom and other parts. That, do you know what? While, while we hate to say... Uh, a see you soon sort of word and goodbye. We're excited to see people step into the fullness of all that God has and desires for them. But you know what's another part for me that really excites me is that as you look around and you look around at our church family, God has been bringing more and more and more people into our church who who aren't necessarily even from this country People from other places that are bringing, and bringing with them the skill and anointing of what God has placed and is doing in their life. And that for me is an exciting part to be in as we step as a church family into generation next, into the next parts for us. More than ever, we need to be a people. And this is as we finish today, we're going to pray this simply. It's this prayer that we pray so often. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy is your name. And this is simply our prayers, God, your kingdom come, God, your will, God, whatever you desire to lead us by the hand into. See, this is why Jesus gave us as a pattern to pray daily, God, what is your will? So God, whatever your will is, God, your will come, Father, your will come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, give us this day, or God, give us what we need. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, God, help me to not miss the mark. (laughs) Help me to not miss the best that you have for me, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. And you see, as Jesus taught us as a pattern, this is where we need to lay it down again as a principle. Something for us to hold on to and to glean from in our lives. I'm going to invite one of my friends, Ezzy. Do you want to come up for me a wee second? You know, as I look around um, the church at the minute, and as I'm saying, there's many people who have come from different parts some from mainland UK, from, from other parts, as I reflect on our own church family, this is the exciting part to see people from Nigeria, as he is, is, from Spain, 
Poland, Italy, Romania, Hungary, Italy, Uganda, South Africa, people from all around the globe, people who the Lord has been centering and bringing as part of us. And can I, can I encourage you to do something? Get to know the people that the Lord is bringing around us, some of the amazing and incredible people that God is bringing around us and what they're desiring to add, not even just to us as a church family, but even to our local community as well, and how we can glean and what God is doing and enriching us as a church family as God is bringing more and more people around us. And as we finish today, I just would love to do this in just one fresh way. I've, we're going to pray this all together in a second. We're going to stand. But I've asked Ezzy, she's going to, to pray this for us. Ezzy, say, say hello and introduce yourself. First of all, the guys, rather than me saying all this, will you tell us where you're from again and what you're doing for a living? Hi. <laughs> Okay, um, AZ for short, it's Ewariezi, that's the long name, but you can just call me AZ. I'm from Nigeria, in Africa, and in Nigeria we have a lot of languages, over 250 languages, but today I'm going to do the Lord's Prayer in my own language, which is Isoko language one of the many languages in Nigeria. Thank you. Amen. So guys, what I want you to do, stand with me this morning, will you? What we're going to do just to finish, and with this, we are done. I'm going to go and get our donuts off the back of it. We're going to get the kids. But I would love us this morning. Can we close our eyes? Let's hold our hands out. This is towards our Father. This is our devotion this morning as we finish this series, as we lead into this Christmas moment. This is simply our prayer that we be a people that would just desire to inquire of the Lord for His will, and that we be a people that would be purposed to live it out, to, to avoid stepping into areas of sin in our lives, to try and avoid it as best as we can, and that we be a people that would just live fully devoted to Him at all times. And so as He's going to, to pray this, let's allow us just to wash over our souls as she prays it in our own language, and then we're going to join together with the words on the screen and pray this together. So let's just... Pray this. This is our Father we're praying to. Thanks, Esther. Ose mi noro bo di wu. O dera jo re ri. Ruvira raze. Ma jo akbona. Lore vara. Ro ekpa noro bo di wu. Re ke mi roko mai ni ne o gene. Where of ro mai. Ro ekpa no ma ro vro. Awo e ni ro mai tori. Where Joe my Louis Dawa ho, so your mind no, a warrior mau gene, Kel mau vira, Togaga, Toraro, Ibede, Ribede, Amen. Amen. Let's pray this together. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you, Ezzy. Thank you so much. Let's give Ezzy a round of applause, can we? Take a seat. Guys, with that, we are done. It's, it's been our joy just to unpack this over the last number of weeks. We encourage you, please, to go, go get your donuts, go get your kids as well. Next week, the carol service is on. And God's blessing over you in this Christmas season. We hope you enjoyed listening to this podcast. For more information about our church and all that we do, please visit our website at emmanuel-church.co.uk.